now it works. Yeah. Yes, now it's doing something. <laughs> ah, there we go. And we are live on Facebook. So we had some quick te te technical difficulties here. Facebook didn't really like what I was doing before, but it's, <laughs> it's ready now. Hello and welcome everyone. Hello, Kevin and Julia. Welcome to our Facebook Live, another live talk about becoming a pro with SSI. Hello. Hi, hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, I will let Kevin and Julia introduce themselves quickly in just a minute. Um, today we have another great talk. Kevin and Julia are actually based in the Maldives. They're a couple managing a training center together, and we're going to hear all about that and we're super excited about it for anyone listening um, and if you're listening live please go ahead and if you have any questions ask us questions in the comments we might ask you some questions so you can just answer them in the comments throughout the talk uh, we're really excited for another pro talk and we really want you guys out there to see the amazing career options you have as a dive professional within SSI and within the whole diving industry Really consider, if you're not sure you want to get st stuck in your office job forever, consider becoming a diving instructor. And we'll hear more about it uh, now in the next, we do about one hour. So, Kevin and Julia, yes. I'm yeah. just going to ask you to introduce yourself real quick. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for having us. My name is Julia. I'm 37 years old. I'm German-Irish. I live here on a beautiful resort island in the Maldives, surrounded by the Indian Ocean. And I am an SSI instructor, trainer, instructor, and dive center base leader for Rasta Divers in Kuramati. Yes. And I'm Kevin. I'm also base leader here in Kuramati, uh, Maldives, with Rasta Divers. Um, I'm just one year shy of uh, becoming 40 years old. Um, I am from the country which is best known for the beers, fries and waffles, which is Belgium. Uh, but for now, um, I'm living in the Maldives for the last four years, I think. And we don't know for how much longer. Here we are. Uh, you are. The <laughs> Maldives. I mean, Maldives definitely has the diving for it, hey? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. There's so much, so much to discover. That's amazing. So guys, um, first and most important question, where did you guys meet and how did you end up in the Maldives <laughs> together? Well, uh, where did we meet? <laughs> so we met the first time in, uh, in Indonesia, Gili Tronga. Um, I had a friend of mine, uh, Tom, which uh, finished his dive master training at Manta Dive in Gili Tronga. Um, and during the summer break, I decided to visit him. You know? Um, and I went over to the island and I, I saw a little bit how everything was working, how much fun they had um, while diving. And I have to say, when, when I went on holiday, I lost a little bit the passion about diving. But because of Tom, I got back into the diving. And Julia was already working in the dive center there as an instructor. But we didn't, we didn't have such a big connection at that time. No. Um, but then I went back home. I was thinking about the diving, about this lifestyle changing career. And then a few months later, I also decided to do my dive master training in the same dive center. And that's where we really connected. Yeah, I think he definitely, uh, I remember meeting Kevin actually when he came straight off the boat during his holiday, because my parents happened to be visiting me on the island as well. Wow. And I think the very first <laughs> night we actually all ended up on the same table eating pizza. That's true. And uh, yeah, and I think he really got hooked because you hung out a lot with the instructor and staff, yeah. of course, you know, hanging out with his friend. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun on Gilly T. And then when Kev came back to do his training uh, and then also became an instructor after, that's when, when we got together. Yes. And we've been working and living together pretty much every day <laughs> since uh, from day one. To day one until now. <laughs> to save rent, you know? Just have to <laughs> save the rent so <laughs> immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, unfortunately the one thing we've established about being a instru diving instructor it's the best it's the best paying job for your mental health but maybe not always the best paying job for your pocket yeah. but yeah. i mean if you get to yeah. save rent then uh, yeah. that, there's a there's a cue for our audience out there so whoever if you guys have a favorite dive buddy just tag them in the comments uh show them a little bit of love 
and let them know uh, what cool talks we have here at SSI. Yeah. Okay, so next question. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, your diving career then. So how did you start becoming an instructor? I mean, you are in IT, Kevin, you're in AIT. So tell us a little bit more how, you, how it came to be. Mm, for me, it wasn't something that was um, uh, particularly planned. It's something I slided into. I did a few tri scuba dives almost 20 years ago now, but I didn't actually become a certified diver until my mid 20s on a backpacking trip to Asia. And I wasn't entirely hooked after the open water course, but returned three, four years later to do the advanced. And that was that was the moment I knew I actually want to keep doing this. So a few months after that, I returned back. Actually, Manta Dive is the dive center. I did pretty much all of my training all the way up to becoming an instructor and had a lot of fun during the dive master training there. Um, I think it's also the dive center there just hooks you in. Everybody is having a great time. Lots of other prof or people there yeah. trying to get the dive master uh, training done. And, uh, and yeah, you see the lifestyle. You get to assist a lot very experienced instructors as well. Everybody has very different teaching styles. So from that moment, it was clear that that's what I would also like to do. You know, I also want to be the person in front and drawing people in. So I did my um, instructor course um, on Gili Air with my instructor trainer, Anna Strumpf. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was lucky enough to be able to then keep working at the dive center over on Gili T for a couple of years before we accepted the job offer to go and come and work in the Maldives no. as base leaders or instructor couple. So we did that and um, almost three years ago now, I then uh, had the financial means to finally also <laughs> go and uh, do my, my IT. kind of have you breaking up there a little bit i mean it is island internet everyone that's uh, that's also one thing <laughs> let's just give it a second are oh, they just going to be back um let's just give it a second they're going to be back just now that's the one thing about islands being on the maldives the internet is not always the greatest. I know from experience living in the Philippines for quite a while, it's, uh, sometimes it's just not working. Um, in the meantime, I see I have a lot of you guys watching live. It's very exciting. And even if you're not watching live, you can still ask a question in the comments. You can ask any questions to Julia, me, to Kevin, whoever's out there. Um, ask them in the comments. We will be checking the comments even after in the next two to three days. We'll come back and also make sure that all your questions are answered. Yule and Kevin will also leave their contact details and all the information on how to get in touch with them in the comments as well. So if you are interested to go see the Maldives, dive with them in the Maldives, or even become an instructor, because Yulia was just explaining us um, about her career path as an instructor trainer, uh, you can actually go and become an instructor, do your instructor training course with Yulia in the Maldives. Um, so that's really exciting. Yeah, have a look, check it out. Um, otherwise, I'm going to ask you guys, tell us a little bit in the comments, where is your favorite diving destination in the world? So Maldives is obviously one of everyone's favorites. Uh, maybe you've made it to Galapagos. Maybe you've made it to one of the holy grail destinations for us divers there. So that would be super exciting. Let us know about your favorite dive destination in the comments. Okay, let's see. I think they're still trying to get back on. I hope they can manage. 
And if you have not yet tagged your favorite dive buddy, make sure to do that in the comments as well. I have a question from Julian so long. Can I become an instructor at your place? I'm a dive master from Germany. And in the Maldives, in the center where Julia and Kevin were working, because I just asked them before, uh, they are actually trying to arrange an ITC later in the year. So you can definitely become an instructor there and just get in touch with them. They do instructor trainer courses there, instructor training courses, sorry. So you can definitely uh, make that happen. And I mean, what better place to become an instructor than in the Maldives really? So that's 100% that exciting. Okay, yeah, so long. If you guys have any questions, ask them away, tag your friends, and let me know what your best diving destination is. Oh, yeah, South Africa, Sodwana Bay. I have to agree. I'm very, very, one of my favorites as well. Uh, for the ones who don't know, uh, I am based in South Africa at the moment as well. Uh, Vanessa, that's a very good question. Uh, Vanessa is asking, what are the general requirements for running a dive center? It does depend a little bit on which country you're based in. So there are uh, government requirements to obviously running a business. So SSI will always want you to comply with whatever the gov government requires. And then there's just some other requirements, like you have to have your equipment set up, so you have to have um, a little bit, you have to have access to a compressor and clean air, you have to have your first aid and oxygen requirements ready, so you have to have first aid kits and oxygen kits on all the, the training center boats and all of that stuff. But if you are looking into running a training center, we have service centers in every country. So, well, in in most countries. So every country that is really a diving destination definitely has a, a service center with SSI. So maybe just get in touch with them. Uh, generally, the easiest way is to put the name of the country at diveSSI.com, or you can just write an email to info at diveSSI.com and we can point you in the right direction of the service center of your country. And they are always there to help you set up your training center. Okay, we'll see. We'll give it another few minutes. I really hope they can make it back. Uh, unfortunately, as we all know, island internet, living on the islands has definitely its benefits. White beaches, but uh, yeah, like we all know, internet is not always the best. <laughs> um, in South Africa, the service center is actually based in Johannesburg. So there is a, ha, I'm just going to let them in. <laughs> yes, so there is a shop. It is connected to a Morris shop, the, the center. It's in North Riding, I believe, in Johannesburg. Hey, they are joining me again. Let's see if they can make it back in. And for everyone, so don't forget to let me know your favorite dive destination. I still want to hear. I haven't heard about anyone saying Maldives yet. Okay, let's see if they can make it back. Oh, Vanessa Aruba, that's nice. <laughs> ah, I can hear you guys. <laughs> oh, we're so sorry. <laughs> no problem. I, to I told I told them it's island internet. There's nothing. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, we had to re restart our router. I hope I hope it holds up. If not, we're very sorry. Yes. Oh, it's fine. Oh. Like I said, I, I kept it going. <laughs> I had some nice <laughs> questions. I had some nice questions in the comments so long. Um, okay. Yeah. So we were talking about you becoming an IT. So tell me a little bit more about why you chose the career path as an IT or why that was such an important thing for you to do. And that was also very... Uh, yeah, something that that happened very naturally. So during my own ITC, I remember I just 
just finished my dive master. Um, I didn't work for a dive master very long and uh, the opportunity came up to do the ITC and I, I personally wasn't sure if I was ready. And then my instructor trainer managed to turn it around in the two weeks of me being very unsure if, if I'm ready to even be in this course to not being able to wait for the day the IE examiner comes and checks out what we've learned. So she was really amazing and she was a huge inspiration. And I think that was the first time I thought, I hope I can do this one day. And then um, being able to work at a, at a very busy dive center where also a lot of um, DMTs hang out and you end up teaching students that actually return to do their dive master training because you've taught them and you get to mentor them and lead them through the course start start to finish almost and um, that was something that that I really enjoyed and it was one of my favorite things to do so it, it took a little while you have to get all the requirements to to take that next step but for me I've I've wanted to do this since becoming an instructor myself. I think I think that's really great. And how you described it, I 100% agree. Uh, becoming an IT is so cool. And I want people out there to know if you are becoming an instructor, it doesn't stop there. There are career options above and beyond that. You can become an IT, you can become a, a training center manager like you two are. You can start working for an agency like I ended up doing. So there's so many yeah. options. It's not just become an instructor and go back to doing something else yeah. or yeah. use it yeah. for your gap year and, and how so many people are doing, which is also yeah. great, but but yeah. still. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a lot of jobs uh, out there, especially here in the Maldives, you see it quite a lot. Someone who's an instructor who might have interest in um, uh, the conservation side of, of the job, you know, and uh, there's a lot of roles here where there is a requirement that you're a dive instructor, but you're actually um, doing a lot of conservation projects yeah. and uh, ecological talks for, for guests or local, uh, local areas. So it's not just about being an instructor. You can be anything within that role. Yeah. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Julian is just asking, what is an IT? An IT is an instructor trainer, so the person that teaches someone to become a diving instructor. Exactly. <laughs> That's what one looks like. <laughs> okay, so how long have you guys lived in the Maldives for? So now it's about about almost four years, I think. Yeah, it's a long time um, for Maldives. Hey? Four years. Yeah. It's our second island. So basically we started working, um, we saw a job offer um, for an instructor couple um, in South Ariatol in the Maldives. Um, and the languages, the languages fitted pretty well. Um, and we tried, we gave it a try, yeah, to do something else. Um, and then they, they immediately offered us the job. And then from being in this big dive center um, on the Gili Islands in Giliti, we ended up as two diving instructors in one dive center on a tiny island in the Maldives, which was a Just big us. challenge. It was very exciting, <laughs> yeah. uh, but the day-to-day -day life was, was a little bit different because now we had to run everything. Yeah? Um, obviously, you have your boat crew, but all the rest, filling the tanks, choosing the dive sites, uh, do the check-ins of the, of the people, doing the planning, everything depends only on you. Um, and this worked out super well, I have to say. We immediately found our rhythm when yeah. we were there. We really loved the diving immediately in the Maldives. That was super good diving. Um, and then after... You can see whale sharks there, you know? Yeah, where we started <laughs> working. <laughs> see whale sharks all year round which which is amazing you can also see mantas all year round yeah. which, which is super cool huh? 15 minute boat ride away and there it is yeah um you can imagine if it's your first time in the maldives also for us it was it was amazing um and then at some point our bosses because they they own three dive centers in the maldives um they asked us to move over to another island um to this island kuramati island which is the biggest island yeah <laughs> You're still here? I can still hear you. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, we'll see. Uh, which, is biggest, which is the biggest Whatever island? Happened. Sorry for... <laughs> uh, which, is, uh, which is the biggest island they own. Um, so it's a little bit more similar to what we had in Indonesia. So here we work in a team. Okay, we are the base leaders, but we're still 100% instructors. We do yeah. equally as many dives as the instructors. Absolutely. But on top of this, we... 
um, yeah, we make sure that everything's fine in dive center, that all the instructors are happy, uh, that the planning is okay. Um, so it felt like we came from having our little job, the two of us on our tiny island, to going to the bigger island um, and having a team to manage. Um, but we also loved it a lot, and that's why we're here now almost for three, three and years, and a half years, I on guess. Kuramati and um, no plans to leave. Yeah, no plans to leave soon. We've also been very lucky during the pandemic because um, the Maldives and our island, we reopened in October to 2020 already. Um, so we've only been cast away, outcast in Europe for five, six months. Um, we haven't, now we haven't left the island since, uh, since October, September 2020. Um, and I think that's also a reason why we've been here for so long, because we had the opportunity to keep on working as in the diving industry. Yeah, huh? very lucky. Super lucky. Mm, that's amazing. I mean, it's really cool that the Mal and the Maldives, for anybody out there just thinking about planning a trip or a vacation or a diving trip, I think throughout this whole pandemic, the Maldives has been the most consistently open place. Like when we get requests and stuff, we know Maldives is always similar regulations. You know, if you get a PCR test and all of that, you can pretty much always enter the Maldives. It's unfortunately, a lot of other countries, it's still more complicated. So if you are planning a holiday, uh, Maldives is still a good spot. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Also yeah. for okay. working. Also for working. Yeah, so that's actually what I also wanted to ask in extension to that. How is it living in the Maldives for this long? Because you always hear mixed messages because sometimes people feel cooped up. Other people love it and they will live there for 20 years. So yeah. tell me a bit more. I think it depends on two things. One, a little bit maybe your own personality. But the other thing, it all comes down to the team that you're working in. Like with any job, if you end up in a job or in a place where you don't feel welcome or or people are not having a very positive attitude or they actually don't like their job very much. Um, I don't know, it could be many, many things. In the end of the day, you are on a small island. Uh, you're more restricted maybe than you would be if you're living in a big country like Thailand where you yes, can move yes, around yeah. freely. You have more access to, um, I don't know, concerts, live music shopping trips to Bangkok for an next, I don't know, here it's, you are on your island. And I think what makes or breaks your experience is pretty much um, the dive center team. And of course the people you're working alongside in the resort as yeah. well. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you like, if you like your job here, I can't imagine the marine life we see here. We've had so many firsts. It's still surprising us every day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the the water and these colors I, I it never gets tired you no. come back from a from a dive and uh, you see your island in the distance and and all the palm trees and the, the white sand the colors it's absolutely insane i think also often often we have guests asking us like how long have you been here and then if you tell them like three and a half years you see their eyes opening and they're like how, how is it possible <laughs> how, how do you do it um and my, my answer is always the same. It's like we are here because our number one passion is diving. Our day evolves around diving. Yeah. After we dive, we talk about diving. So it's our biggest passion. And that's the thing. If you're not passionate about diving as much as we are, I understand it's difficult to, to understand how you can stay here for so long. But on the other hand, if you like diving, and we, I think we're lucky to be in a very nice resort. We have some freedoms, we have nice food, we have nice rooms, everything. And I just opened the door in the morning here and the ocean is there. I walk 10 yeah. minutes, 10 minutes, and I'm on the dive boat. Uh, 10 minutes, 10 meters. 10 meters. <laughs> <laughs> That's long for Maldives, 10 yeah. minutes walk. <laughs> You're off the island after 10, 10 minutes for sure. <laughs> but I think it, it, also, it all comes down to the passion. And then as Julia said, seeing what, yeah where you end up and what team you end up um if it clicks or not but i guess it's it's a little bit the same in every job that you do no? but you could also yeah. earn money i think that's that's the thing like diving okay it's not you never do it to get rich or 
I don't know, if you want your hair to stay nice, you don't become a dive instructor. If you want to get very rich, you also will not no. become a dive instructor. But if you want to have a nice lifestyle, and Maldives is definitely also one of these places where you can save money, it's possible. It's definitely possible because... Yeah, because you don't have anything to spend it on. Because <laughs> you're here, you're diving, you're underwater the entire day. Um, usually what resorts, um, your, your lodge and food is included your water is included so really everything you're earning you're saving so and then you can make up for maybe the 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 cultural aspects or or the the hobbies that you miss outside no. of diving by then being able to spend it on a really nice holiday usually every six months um, instructors get the opportunity to leave for a break now for us it was a bit different because of the pandemic yes, our team was smaller oh no I think I lost them again. Let's give it a second or two and see if they come back. So long, I see Vanessa's asking a really great question. And that's, do you see a general shift to ecotourism? Huh? Are you back? Yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. Yes. So I'm going to ask you the question from Vanessa. <laughs> Um, and Vanessa's asking is, do you see a general shift to ecotourism? I see more uh, eco-related offers like planting corals, cleanup dives, maybe ecology courses, stuff like that. Definitely. Definitely. I think in general in they the Maldives to. also. Yeah. Mm. So I think in general, so the way resorts um, try to function now, it's much more ecological friendly. Um, and also for the diving for us, huh? we try to do as many cleanup dives as we can. Um, we have a very nice house reef here. We mm -hmm. spend a lot of time on the house reef um, with beginners, uh, with reviews. Um, so there's not much trash because we also tell our customers um, they can take a trash bag. They yeah. can put also any trash they find into their pockets. We will empty their pockets after the dive from the BCD. No problem at all. Um, but yeah, there. I think it's a general movement all around the world and Maldives is certainly participating in this. And, and guests are really aware yeah. also. Many guests ask us about the reef and if we've seen an improvement since the, since the pandemic. Um, um, they, they try to reduce their plastic. Yeah. A lot of people here are also interested in the ecology courses. We're very lucky because we can see mantas, um, especially during the manta season here in our little atoll. It's from December until May. So usually we have the uh, manta and ray ecology course as the specialty course of the month, you know, and people are interested yeah. to learn about that. Lots of sharks around. But I think the whole world, it seems, at least in our yeah. little world, <laughs> more eco-friendly and you see it the resorts are trying i mean as much as a holiday resort can be eco-friendly they're yeah. reducing the plastic um there's glass bottles everywhere now um this, you can refill the refill your water yeah refill oh, that's right on the, yeah on the road, for example yeah. um also what we see we, have, we also have a marine biologist who gives presentations yeah um and you can see there's quite a lot of people going there yeah. in the evening to listen to the presentation and they also really want to understand and learn more about what is happening not only in the sea but on land in the Maldives yeah. so so there is an awareness and the resort is also trying to make people more aware by mm -hmm. there's little messages left and right why we use uh, why we don't use plastic bottles why you can refill your water etc cetera, etc cetera. that's amazing and I, I do agree the whole diving industry i think especially us divers because you're underwater all the time and you see the difference i know from when i started which was more than 20 years ago now <laughs> to now when i go diving i haven't been on a dive where i didn't see one piece of trash in years yeah no matter yeah. where i go yes. so it does make you very aware. And I think that's what makes us care more. And which is a super amazing shift, in my opinion, because divers now want more ecotourism. They will go to, they will choose a more ecological resort over another just because they care. And yeah. I think that's a change that the that the all the other industries and the rest of the world should should really take an example of. Because yeah. it in diving, it really works. 
It's maybe yeah, also you... worth mentioning the local um, local islands because more and more local islands now, and this makes a huge difference, I think, local islands are now also um, having guest houses available for people who don't want to spend their money on a resort island. Um, they want to have a bit of a cheaper experience yes. on the local islands, which are really fantastic with the guest houses there. Dive centers popping up everywhere. Um, so also it creates an awareness amongst the um, yeah, the local yeah. people. On the and island. I think also the, the divers, huh? like you can see people really, if they see something in the water, it's almost it a fight up. to get first to pick it up, True. which is nice to see. And people come on the boat and the first thing they, they give to the boat crew is the trash they found, which is very nice because like we also brief it a little bit, but you can see also like fun divers, everybody gets involved, yeah? which, is, yeah. which is nice. That's great. And it's just a good way forward. And we just yeah. now need to convince everyone else in our lives. <laughs> so everybody who's listening, make sure you convince all your friends and family to also care about the environment just as much as you do. Okay, so uh, my next question is, what would you call some potential difficulties with living um, and working together as a couple, working together, living together on an island, not having any space for, your, for yourself? Exactly. That's no, no. Uh, <laughs> nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to hide. There's literally nowhere to hide. Yeah, we we have we work in the same place. Uh, we live in the same place. We're on the boat together. We're on the house streets together. We're always <laughs> together. Um, so yeah, I think the biggest difficulty is we can't hide. No. No, it's not like you can have a tantrum and storm into your kitchen or living room. <laughs> we don't have that. We we have a room. It's a it's a nice room, but it's small and like you. You can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> the sandbank, if you like. Yes. But I think it helps a little bit if your responsibilities, okay, if you're just an instructor couple, you have the same. I mean, you're still kind of each of you're doing your own thing throughout the day. Yeah, yeah. We have our uh, base leader responsibilities very clearly divided. Um, so, and then at the end of the day, anyways, we only talk about diving. So yeah, we share. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe that's not much yeah. conflict you can have. <laughs> maybe there's more difficulties for people that are not here because our families always say we're very, um, we're actually just boring nerds. We talk about I dive gear, nerds. about, <laughs> yeah. and then we don't have many arguments yeah. about that. Um, no, I can imagine there are difficulties, but for us, like somehow it works. Like we don't know, we don't know what the secret is, we don't know why, but it works um we're used to being together 24 7 um but to be 100 percent honest sometimes we hire instructor couples yeah? yeah and you can see the dynamic is a little bit different so so i guess it will be different for everybody uh but for us it's not difficult no mm. if you had a tip for a couple out there looking at, and into working together as instructors what would the one tip be <laughs> But do it. uh, do it. you should nice. do it. It's an amazing experience to share. And yeah, what an adventure. I don't know. It doesn't get much more adventurous than that. No, traveling the world and uh, doing what you love and yeah, just following your passion and then doing it together and still sharing at the end of the day. Same with our team, because here actually there's now three couples working yes. and they're all equally as passionate about diving um, and teaching as we are yeah. so it's nice to see because we share a lot of the stories then when we're having dinner together because we also all eat together <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's nice to see uh, to see that and I, I i think it's something very special and just go for it definitely mm. awesome right. i do have to say as a side note from ssi side i do know a lot of dive centers like to hire instructor couples oh yeah to manage centers yeah. together <laughs> yeah. in the Maldives here also, for huh? sure because you're you have also a, a room sharing situ, situation so um, a dive center or resort has only so many staff rooms so usually the rooms are designed for two people and it's always easier and nicer for us to hire a couple that will share that space rather than two individuals it doesn't always have to be that way we've also hired uh, singles of course in the past but uh, it makes everything easier and while couples mm. can also fight and break up um, it, it's of course true yeah. You, you hope that being in such a small space, they have each other, you know, yeah. Yeah. back on if, if you had a hard day and, and you have your, your, your best friend 
there with you. Um, I don't know. I think it will make it makes life easier. I think it makes yeah, it makes it easier if you have somebody who can share the good, the bad moments. Yeah, uh, makes it a little bit easier, and also you can learn from each other. Yeah, this happened mm -hmm. to me today. Yeah. Maybe what do you think I should do? This yeah. this one. Yeah. Or I found I found the ghost pipe fish over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Like this, so you can share everything, and that, and that's that's what we just said. Also, we talk about diving all the time, um, but that's our passion. That's what we do. <laughs> and if you're a couple, um, I think if you try to um, to come to to a place like here, like the Maldives, it's also a good test. Yeah, you will find out. <laughs> if it doesn't yeah. work, you know. <laughs> very true so you were just talking a little bit about we were talking a little bit about hiring and stuff like this so i actually have a question you guys have hiring power in your center right so i want to know if somebody sends you an application what are things that you look for for all the instructors out there that have been doing something else have been uber drivers for the last two years yeah. and are looking to get back into into becoming an instructor again um, what are yeah. you looking for on CVs, on application letters? What can the people do? I think I think this is sometimes a misconception because we're we're in an industry where okay we're all very um, uh, I'm missing now the English word for it Chilled. easy good. but when you're applying <laughs> for a job it should be do your research a little bit just check where are you applying to you know you're applying to a whatever four star five star resort in the Maldives or working on a super yacht might be different than applying to um, a very cool dive center shack in Jamaica I don't know so but do your research and I think in the end if you want to make a CV easy to read just make it look nice put everything in there we also care about skills people have outside of teaching and no, diving sure. like if you're very good on social media you're a graphic designer you're a me mechanic or you're a carpenter i don't care if it's in there like in the back of my mind we yeah. would always think okay how can we use that um and if they've had a career prior to diving put it in there as well it's interesting if somebody comes out of a corporate environment and they've been doing certain things Cool. maybe we can put that to use and um yeah just put it all in put a nice letter in let us know that you've actually maybe had a look on our website um and why and why you want to come and work with us so and the language is very important for us because we have to cover yeah. a market yeah. that's just c'est la vie but since we hire couples let's say one person has two languages we need the other person only speaks english great still great because as the couple you're still covering three of the languages yeah, we just, we're looking yeah. for but the person who only speaks english maybe is good servicing equipment um or with the compressors so yeah put it all in there and then we'll have a look awesome so guys go and apply for a job <laughs> Yeah, yeah just go for it. Don't hesitate. You, you just talked about previous careers. So I'm actually interested. How did your careers prior to being instructors influence your job now, and do they help at all, or is it something that you just wanted to escape? <laughs> no, I, before I became a dive instructor, I was a um, HR consultant for IT and uh, telco companies in in actually in South America, Europe, and Australia. And that I didn't, I never hated my job. It was okay. It was a normal corporate job. I did it. I was always happy when Friday came around and sad when Sunday night yeah. came around as well. Um, but the skills I've learned in that job, certainly now with the hiring aspect, that's, that's a, that's a no brainer. Um, writing up the job description and then uh, pre-selecting uh, people that, you know, would be nice to speak with doing the interviews, doing the hiring, onboarding. Once we hire the team, we have an onboarding process going on to make sure everybody gets trained in a good amount of time, gets trained well. Yeah. So that that for sure, that for me all, all helps a little yeah. bit the planning and organizational skills. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'm, I more have a sales and teaching background, like also two different careers um, back in Belgium. Um, and they definitely help, you know, as a diving instructor, uh, instructor, the teaching part is very important. I love to teach. Yeah? It doesn't matter what age. Um, it's nice to pass some knowledge. It's nice to see evolution in your students. So teaching is a, it has been a great help, the background I have there. And then sales, yeah. 
it's good to be a dive instructor, but if, if you want to make a little bit of money, you have to do some upselling, continued education, etc. So how to approach um, our lovely students um, and how to try to sell another course or do another course. So, so for sure, I'm sure my background helped. But as Julia said in previous question also, I think that any background can be a help for in while becoming a dive instructor. There are some parts that you're going to have to learn, yeah, maybe the hard way also. Uh, but on the other side, the more experience you have um, coming into a job as a dive instructor, the more it's going to help. Yeah, So it can be any different type of background. You're always going to find something mm. that's going to make you different mm. than the other instructor next to you. Yeah, 100%. That's amazing. Um, so one more thing, because you both said you came from previous careers. Uh, for all the people out there stuck, I want you to tell me why is it not too late to start, no matter how old you are, no matter what you do, why is it not too late to start diving or to become a diving instructor? We're old. We're old, huh? <laughs> We're old for the diving industry. Yeah. No, but you're never stuck. That's, being stuck is something <laughs> mental. There's always another option. Like for me also, when I was 32, 33 years old, old I also made an entire career switch in Belgium. Um, I was tired of my job. I went back studying um, and I started something different. And then I discovered my passion for school diving again. And then I started something completely different again. So if there is a will, it's very cliche, um, you can make it happen. There's nothing holding you back. Yeah? Um, even if you want to become a professional, what's the worst thing that can happen? You're going to have fun while doing your courses. In yeah. the end, if it doesn't work out, you had a few months of fun, and then you can go back At to the very to worst life. case, it's a personal achievement. So if it's mm. something already on your mind anyways, then it's almost, it's very clear that, that you should go for it. And then if in the end it stops with maybe just working one season or two seasons and realizing, oh, it's not really for me, because often people just realize that maybe once they're actually working as an instructor. Yeah. I think go for it. Be positive, have a good attitude, work hard. And it doesn't end with being an instructor. As you said, you can be a very successful dive instructor and then can go into different directions, different branches to, um, to, to really make it a career and do it long term. Yeah, there's many like other a, options. Like yeah. a lot of our people. Hmm. Yeah. There's really nothing to lose. Huh? Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be an amazing experience. As we, we all know, we know. It's going to be an amazing experience. And then afterwards it's a life changer see how it goes um in that regard julian actually asked a question and it is do you work <laughs> every day or do you have some days off do you even need or think about a weekend very no. good question we yeah. say all the time no to the to the guests they always ask us also oh, you have uh, it's a friday so tomorrow you have saturday sunday off then that's obviously not the case we work and it's real work usually three days a day is a normal day for us that's nothing special and then still stuff has to get done afterwards uh, officially which is quite normal for the diving industry i guess we have yeah. four days off um, a month doesn't sound a lot to some people but it's actually very much in the diving industry it's very definitely yeah. there's people who never who get like one day off a month or not none at all yeah. right? and uh, so what happens it's always very dynamic depending on if we're in high season you will be working two and a half three weeks without a day off but then once the opportunity arises you take two days back to back we uh, we're very flexible yeah. in how we take the holidays um, so so that's all good and well but yeah it's yeah. Uh, you take your off days when it's good for the business yeah, if the months are more quiet, maybe instead of four, you can take six days exactly. off or seven. Yeah. Depends, depends a little bit um, yeah. on how it goes. But yeah, we don't have fixed weekends. We don't have fixed no. off days. <laughs> and Julian, I will tell you, when we have off day, guess what we do? Go diving. Go diving. <laughs> That's yeah. it. That's it. Um, so, but you get we get very used to it. And like we we like. Also, we decide when we have an off day, it's a little bit, we look at the planning for the next day. And if there's an opportunity for somebody to have an off day, you take the off day. So it's not yeah. really planned in advance. This day, you're going to have a day off and this day, it's more spontaneous, which is also fun. Yeah. 
Awesome. So you guys, as we live underwater on Instagram, have a really cool Instagram page and you use social media a lot. Has this helped you in your career or is this helping you with, with the center now? I mean, obviously, maybe less while you're being a base leader, but... No, I think I think it's it's helpful. Instagram is very is very helpful. First of all, it's nice. It's fun to do. Yeah, it's fun to take the camera out and go and take pictures. Um, but then, second of all, I think like every every student that we have, every person that we have diving with us, we try to make the connection via Instagram, um, yeah. and we see that many people also come back to us via Instagram asking, yeah. saying, "Look, um, if I come back to the island, are you guys gonna still be there?" which is super nice to hear. Or they send us, yeah, I'm coming back this and this day. Uh, can you already plan me in for, I don't yeah. know which course. Um, so for us, it's, it's very nice to keep a connection with our, with our students, with the guests that we have here. Um, also but also, yeah, yeah, also social media is, is an amazing network. Huh? Um, like we talked about trying to find a job as an instructor. There's amazing groups out there. SSI um, Facebook page also on the, um, so in general, if you have social media, try to use it as much as you can. You can also promote yourself, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like Julia said, try to bring as much as you can into your CV. Um, if you have a nice Instagram, yeah, where you look good on the beach, whatever, it's always nice. We will, always, we will check it out for sure. Definitely. So, so it definitely helps, yeah, certainly now. For, for everyone out there, so definitely add your social medias on your CVs as well. If you yeah. if they are with people generally, training centers want to see them for the good or for the bad, actually. Okay. So um, it's never really a good picture of yourself if all your Instagram pictures are you yourself getting drunk on the beach. <laughs> but training centers will also want to see that. But like they said, it's super important having, having a, a nice... Um, standing on social media it can really help you in your career because also a lot of training centers out there are looking for people to help them with their social media so if it's something you're good at um, training centers will love it they will jump for it yeah. Yeah, for everyone out there if you uh, just tag your give us your ig tag so just put the at in your ig name in the comments so whoever's listening can follow each other it's also a nice side tip um, I have a, just three, four more questions. This one is what tips would you give someone thinking about becoming an instructor and why should they even consider climbing their career ladder more like, like becoming an IT or looking to maybe photography or trying to get into a niche maybe? <laughs> why? Yes. I don't know. I, I think it's, it's a life-changing um, opportunity to really wake up in the morning and not think, oh God, I have to go to work. I have no. this workload ahead of me, but you're waking up to go to work excited every day. And it's really true. It's not just cliche. We don't care what day of the week it is. We're not looking at our calendar. <coughs> is it Friday already? No, it doesn't matter. And it's uh, immensely fulfilling. I think also, I don't know, there's so many stress factors in the world yeah. from the outside. Um, and you just go underwater and you're on your tiny little island and you can just maybe, maybe you're on an island, maybe not, but you can just switch off, go underwater and really live in the moment. You know, your work is to take people and show them the underwater world, but you're very focused on what's happening right now because you're teaching somebody, you're trying to improve somebody's uh, diving Um you're, you're, you're expl explaining the skills you're not so much thinking about oh what I, do I have to do later what happened yesterday what the person say yeah. to me so I really love I find it very yeah meditative <laughs> job actually <laughs> of course there are moments that are stressful mm. when you have a beginner divers and you have the strongest current day ever recorded and you have to get them through the training that's obviously <laughs> stress moment as well but I, I I think it's just like uh, like you guys said also on previous live talks mental health it's a huge thing and mm -hmm. um, go for it do it get the experience and then after find the place that also pays fairly for yeah. for your experience that <laughs> yeah. you get you, you invest yes. a lot of money in yourself so find a spot that appreciates that and yeah 
live a nice and also, life. And also, I would say is like, don't like take it too lightly. You know, we always say our chilled out lifestyle, we're living on the beach, etc. But in the end, the teaching is it's quite serious. Like you, you teach people how to dive. There's a lot of safety measures, etc. So being a good diver, being a good diver is is very good. It's a good start. But then you have to work hard on how to pass the message, how to pass what is important, safety-wise, etc. So, so it's also an investment. Like it's not, it's not always like you we jump in the water, we go down, yourself. we look at the fish, and that's it. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. So yeah, it's still it's still a full-time job. Yeah, it's a full-time job. It's a nice place. It's the best job there is in the world, but it's still a job. Yeah. I have to 100% agree with that. Dive, dive instructors very often have this stereotype of I chill yeah. all day with my beer on the beach. But one thing I've definitely learned in the last few years in the diving industry is there is so much potential. So if you are the young, hungry person, the, the hardworking instructor, yeah. you will have all the opportunities in the world. If you really work hard, if you're being professional, if you are trying to get your skills up, maybe don't just think about instructors, think about yeah. servicing equipment, think about learning how a compressor works, think about learning how to uh, handle a boat or at least how boat engines work. You know, the things uh, involved in the diving center. And if you do all of that, and if you're hardworking, the sky is the limit. You can go become training center manager. You can do like I said, you can become an IT, you can become maybe an underwater photographer, you can become a marine biologist, you can yeah. start working in a training agency or in an equipment producer. So there's so many opportunities, but if you just work hard and don't fall into that stereotype, the, yeah. the sky is the limit. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, I'm just I just have another question from Ty. Ty is asking they want to change from Petty to SSI. Is that possible? Of course, they can answer that one. <laughs> of course, that's possible. That's what I do. Um, yeah, so that's the whole idea. If you want to change, you you can uh, look and find a, a nearby SSI um, instructor training center and sign yourself up for a crossover. And, um, and it normally depends on where you are, where you go. Uh, here, we do it in two, three days when we have the new staff uh, bring them on board. Yeah. And uh, before we train them on how the diving center works, we cross them over to SSI and teach them everything they need to know um, about the teaching uh, systems. And go for it. Yes, definitely. And just for a quick side note for the crossover, uh, crossovers are semi-easy courses. So basically, you are already an instructor. You've gone through all your hard training to be a good instructor. All we do in the crossover is teach you how SSI works. So you're still going to be the same great instructor that you are. And you just get that information of how to apply SSI and how to use all our great tools, um, like our online materials, everything, the digital materials, certifications, our app, our logbook, the My Dive Guide, all these amazing features we have. So you just learn about that. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, I've got two more questions. The one is, what is your dream dive destination? Four. <laughs> long, huh? Was on top of the bucket list. <laughs> okay. List is long. On top. <laughs> Galapagos. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> Something more achievable for now would be the Deep South and the Maldives formula. Where you have the big pelagic swimming around as well no, and nice. uh, that's definitely for now the most achievable yeah. <laughs> that, that i would love to go to this year but yeah galapagos is oh, i think all of all, i think all of us that haven't yeah. been i haven't i haven't been either and a i want to do the orcas in norway oh yeah no way, yeah. yeah yeah that's why there's so many places huh? yeah yes it doesn't <laughs> there's just there's not enough time but yeah, um, for the audience out there, tell us in the comments, what is your dream dive destination? Where is your ultimate top of the bucket list? Okay, and my last question for the day is, of all the dive sites you've been to so far, what is your absolute favorite? I know it's a hard question. I know. Everybody I ask, they're like, oh. It's very difficult, no. Uh... Puyo Madivaru. 
yes, definitely. For me, it has to be Madivaro. Um, to be fair, it's not like I've dived all over the world no, yet. No, no, um, I've, I've, I've dived in Europe, in the Canary Islands, uh, a little bit in, in Thailand, and, um, and of course, a lot in Indonesia and the Maldives. But we're very lucky we have a dive site about eight minute boat ride from here. Majivaro, very, very popular with all the liverboards as well. Uh, schooling gray reef sharks, eagle rays, leaf fish. You have big stuff, you have small stuff, you have everything. And it doesn't matter which way the current is going or how strong the current is. There's always something to see. You can drift into the channel. I've had so many first um, encounters there and and yeah amazing amazing dives and we go there almost every day so we're very lucky yeah. that we get to visit it each day yeah no i have to say uh, Madivaru it's it's amazing uh but i can also add like we spend we spend a lot of time on the house reef for example it's a dive site that we do a lot a lot a lot it's not the best dive site in the world but still <laughs> but still it's also charming. anything can happen anything can happen on the house reef like uh, two days Manta ago at Manta in the morning here yeah. um so it, one pinpoint, one dive site is very difficult, yeah. very difficult. But of course, yeah, we have Madivaru here, which is unbelievable. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, it's very nice that you have your favorite dive site in the world just there and you get to go on it every day. <laughs> that is <so> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, sure so 10 point. meters walk into the dive center and then yeah. 10 minutes drive. 10 minutes on the boat. To See, the our dive world side. is very small. Huh? It's very small, yeah. Very small. I have actually, yeah, I have Uri Iglesias saying their favorite dive site is Kuramati, but only with Kevin and Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Uri. I never heard about it. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, definitely. That's amazing. Well, guys, do you have any last words for our audience? Anything you want to still mention? I did tell everyone that you will put your information in the comments. Uh, Julian was interested because he lives in cold Germany. He's interested in an ITC with you. So I told him, can you okay, just get yeah. in touch with you? <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I think anyone nice. who's uh, even looking to become an instructor, go for it. I think if you speak to any instructor who's active at this moment in time working and uh, happy out they will tell you it's probably the best decision they ever made if you are already an instructor and and anyone wants to know about working mm. in the maldives or wants to send us their cv um we have a complete team right now at this moment in time but go for it you can contact us if there's any questions afterwards but um i think it's just for the mental health it's the best yeah, job and also i think as we mentioned earlier like there is a need for instructors right now there there mm -hmm. is a need for Huge. instructors so if if you're in doubt just just do it just go for it and then look through the job opportunities job. and then you will find a job like you will find a job um so yeah just do it just go for it maybe do a bit of research uh, even before you go into the ITC, if you have an idea about where you want to work, see or maybe get in touch with dive center owners and ask them what they're looking for. What yeah. do they need, you know, in terms of whatever skills, languages, whatever it might be. Um, and then just let them know you're going into your ITC and you'll, you'll, you'll drop them a message once you're done to see if you can gain some experience. Um, so, yeah, that's it. 100%. Okay. I agree. And I think it's a, it's a very nice way to end this. Just go for it. <laughs> so like they say, like, like both you and Kevin say, there is a worldwide need in diving, in dive instructors. And we have dive centers contacting us as SSI on a daily basis, desperately looking for instructors. So just go for it. You will definitely find a job. And it is pretty much the best job in the world. I always tell everybody diving is such a cool job because it can mostly only happen in the most beautiful places of the world. <laughs> mostly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it is definitely, if you like beautiful places, if you like to be outdoors, this is your call to action. Go ahead, contact your closest dive center. Go, just go on the website right now, divesi.com, and you will find the closest dive centers to you. You can check there where it is, instructor courses worldwide. Maybe you are in cold Europe at the moment, sitting in a snowstorm. Then you might just do your instructor course in the Maldives. So <laughs> check it out. Definitely worth living the dream. Thank you so much for joining me, Julia and Kevin. Please. Sorry Thank about you. the internet. It was, 
it was yeah. a really great talk. No, no problem. That's it's just we're just being real with our customers out there and with everybody yeah. listening. Uh, <laughs> there's many great things about the inter, uh, about the Maldives, but internet might not be one of them. Not one of them. <laughs> but that's fine. You don't always need the best internet. No. Okay, thank you guys. And for everyone else, we have another talk coming to you next week. So stay tuned. You will see the announcement on SSI. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone again. Thank you and keep telling, answering those questions in the comments. And if you have any, any questions to us, just let us know. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.